keep talking about Article 240. We're going to get into Section 240.6, Standard Ampere Ratings. Circuit breakers rated 10 amps are now considered standard, and circuit breakers that can be adjusted from a remote location are now addressed as well. Okay, well, yeah, not much to talk about here. I mean, you know, 240.6a tells you the standard ratings of fuses and breakers. Now, why, why is this important? Why do I need to know the standard ratings? Who cares? Well, remember 240.4b said, listen, you have to condu protect conductors at or below their opacity unless the opacity of the conductor doesn't correspond with a standard rating. Well, what's a standard rating? 240.6, right? So this table is really essential when it comes to larger sized circuit breakers, okay? Let's say you have a wire that's good for 130 amps. I think one gauge is good for 130 amps at the 75 degree column. Can I put that on a 125 amp breaker? Sure, of course, we put it on a 20 amp breaker, I don't care. Could you put it on a 150 amp breaker? Yes, because 130 amps is not standard. Okay, so it's important that we know what the standard ratings of fuses and breakers are. 10 amps is now considered a standard rating of breaker. I've seen plenty of 10 amp circuit breakers. Usually they're in, in really small PV installations, like if somebody wants to put you know, a solar system on their, on their detached garage or something, a lot of times you'll put that on a 10 amp circuit breaker. So 10 amp breakers are not new. They were just never really considered standard. Now I gotta be honest here, does this really change anything? Mm, not really, because you're not using the next size up rule for 18 gauge or 22 gauge. Why? You know, I mean, this probably doesn't really change anything. But hey, why not? It used to only be considered standard for fuses. Now it's considered standard for circuit breakers. Fine. Non-standard ratings are allowed. Look, if you if you can find a circuit breaker that's rated 117 amps, or or you know, what, I'll do you one better. It, uh, there are such a thing as like 32 amp breakers or 24 amp breakers. Um, are those standard? Nope. Does that mean you cannot use them? No, not necessarily. Right. So you don't have to use standard ratings. Non-standard ratings are allowed. And fuses also have standard ratings of one, three, six, and you guessed it, 601. <laughs> 601. Okay, yeah. Um, the, the fuse enclosures, the, the actual frame of fuse enclosures changes uh, at 600 amps. So if you want to get 600 amp protection, um, but you don't want to change it down to a smaller frame of enclosure, then you use a 601 amp fuse. It gives you basically the same protection as a 600 amp fuse, but in a different frame size. So that's, what, uh, that's why 601. I know it seems really weird when you first see that. 240.6D, Remotely Accessible Adjustable Trip Circuit Breakers. Look at this cool piece of equipment, man. This switchboard has an onboard computer on it. For circuit breakers whose trip settings can be readjusted from a remote location, the adjusted setting is considered the setting. Okay, so maybe these circuit breakers have a, an actual adjustable setting of up to 2,000 amps whatever you set it to is considered the rating. We call that the long time pickup rating. So yeah, this thing might be rated 2000 amps. Does that mean you have to have 2000 amp wire on it? No, if you dial it back to let's say 1200 amps, you could put three sets of 600 KC mil on it. That would be considered protected. So just like circuit breakers that can be adjusted right there on the circuit breaker, if you can just adjust them remotely from, uh, from computer software, then the adjusted setting is considered the setting. But much more important, we have this. Remote access must be a local network interface. Okay, so uh, a, a network in the building, right? Or a networked in face, uh, interface that uses a breaker and software evaluated for cybersecurity or has undergone a documented cybersecurity assessment. This is tricky business. This is the code recognizing that cybersecurity is a concern, also recognizing that we in the NEC don't know how to deal with it because that, that's not what we do, right? We're not computer nerds. We're, and by, I, by the way, I say nerds lovingly, right? I'm a nerd, right? So we're, we're not computer people, we're electrical people. So we will tell you, listen, you have to do something. We're not going to quite tell you how to do it. You have to have a cybersecurity assessment. There are standards for cybersecurity, okay? It's just not the NEC. So here we've got this switch gear. 
Uh, this is at a ski resort uh, by my by my house in Utah. This is the computer that controls the switch gear. They use this for ice for uh, for snow manufacturing and all sorts of different things. This controls the uh, the generator and the cogeneration power plant that they have. All of this stuff is done through computer software. Uh, if a bored teenager was able to hack into that system, they could knock down the whole thing, right? And maybe nobody would die, but <laughs> they would be losing millions of dollars. And boy, what if it was a hospital or a power plant or something? Yeah, we, we have to deal with cybersecurity here in 2023. So there you go. Uh, cybersecurity requirements. By the way, we added cyber uh, cybersecurity requirements as a general requirement in 110.3A8, and we also added it as a specific requirement in 708.7 .7 for critical operations power systems. So if you're into that kind of thing, take a look at Article 708. I don't think I'm planning on specifically covering it in this video series.